This video will walk through the literacy flowchart for 4th through 12th grades that can assist district MTSS teams and school MTSS teams to create a standard protocol for interventions. This flowchart is available in PDF for download. The first steps in developing a standard protocol for interventions in adolescent literacy are to determine your intervention matrix and your intervention entry rules. The intervention matrix refers to developing and defining the actual intervention. What curriculum and practices will be used? What staff will provide the intervention? When will it take place? In secondary settings, there are additional unique questions such as does this require schedule change or will an extra period of reading be offered? And do staff need training to teach reading? Other additional questions regarding the environment, curriculum, instruction, and intensification of the intervention will need to be answered. When developing the intervention matrix, you might like to use the intervention matrix document found in the Moodle. You will see on this flowchart that for 4th through 12th grades, it is recommended that two intervention protocols be developed. An intervention focusing on more word level reading, this protocol would address advanced phonics, morphology, spelling, and fluency. Another intervention protocol will focus on vocabulary and comprehension. The intervention entry rule refers to the decisions and scores on assessment that will warrant individual students entering an intervention. When developing intervention entry rules, the district and school MTSS teams will need to examine the universal screening system, including assessments that will determine student need for intervention and the capacity of the system or school to support the interventions. Several tools in the course will help with this step, including the intervention resource planning tool and the resources associated with building a universal screening system. In a secondary setting, this is where we may begin to use a screening techni technique known as multiple gating. That is, using an easily accessible measure first screen and then administering more specific measures to a smaller group of students. Once the screening system, intervention matrix, and entry rules are defined, the next step is to complete the universal screening. In grades four and five, this could be administering a traditional reading curriculum-based measurement, such as oral reading fluency or maze. In grades six through 12, this could be as simple as analyzing historical reading information, including end of grade test scores. The goal of this step is to find the least invasive assessment that gives a good picture of which students are on track in reading or off track in reading. For schools with more students at risk in reading, districts and schools may decide they would like to administer reading measures to all students. For schools with few students at risk in reading, analyzing historical information may be sufficient. The next layer is one we've discussed quite a bit when building an MTSS, which is to analyze the screening data at the grade level to determine the effectiveness of our core support. It will be important to first look at the grade level before we look at individual class or individual student information to assist in determining if our core instruction in the area of literacy is sufficient to meet the needs of our students. If less than 80% of our students are meeting that threshold, then before moving to intervention, or at the same time as moving to intervention, it will be imperative that the school team, possibly with assistance from the district, examine how to intensify instruction for all students in the area of literacy. If many students demonstrate risk in literacy in a secondary setting, this may include revising the ELA block or class to include instruction on reading skills and strategies. If we need to intensify and work on core instruction, there will still be students who require intervention. When determining students who require intervention, during this step, we will identify the students who did and did not meet the threshold for risk on the universal screening. 
For the students who aren't showing need based on the initial screen, it's likely that those students only require core instruction. For each of these steps, of course, we want the professional judgment of the teachers to assist in the final decision making. For the group of students who do meet the initial threshold for risk during the universal screening, we may need to ad administer additional assessments at this time to clarify the area of need. Common assessments may include program placement tests, an oral reading fluency measure analyzed for accuracy, or a phonics assessment. The measures utilized in this step will depend on which measures were used in the universal screening, as well as the programs and practices selected for intervention. The students who fall at or below the defined intervention entry rule on measures, measures of word level reading are most likely to benefit from a supplemental intervention program or protocol that was defined back in our first frame that focuses on advanced phonics, morphology, spelling, and incorporates fluency. When we monitor the progress of students in this group, we will pay specific attention to measures of accuracy and set goals based on desired accuracy. To summarize, so far we've looked at screening scores for individual students. We've identified a group of students who did not fall below our intervention entry rule and confirmed they will continue to receive differentiated core instruction. We've looked at the screening scores and identified a second group of students who are demonstrating need in the area of word level reading. We've confirmed and placed them in an intervention. Now we will look at the group of students who demonstrate some need for intervention, but not in the area of accuracy or word reading. For this group of students, we will examine an oral reading fluency score for words correct or rate, or other measures administered in our previous step. If there are any students who don't meet the intervention entry rule for rate, they will likely respond to differentiated core as we pay close attention to their growth in vocabulary and comprehension. For students who are showing the need in rate but not in accuracy, that screening profile indicates a best match in intervention in a protocol that combines instruction in vocabulary and comprehension. As always, we would monitor the group and individual progress, paying close attention to measures of rate to ensure intervention is accelerating the progress of those students. Ideally, this process takes place each time you screen all students, so we are constantly analyzing and responding to the needs in core, as well as providing supplemental intervention to those who require it. The timing in a secondary setting will likely follow opportunities for schedule change, such as at the quarter or semester mark. As you can see, to implement this type of intervention system, it will take planning, coordination, and support from the district and the school-based MTSS teams.